Hi, everyone, and welcome. It is Wednesday, October 27th, and we are having the 75th in a row Knowledge Bowl Light Hangout sponsored by Topher Spin Meteorites. We're very, very happy you joined us today. The topic for today's hangout is going to be Lodronites, a very, very rare meteorite that I didn't have any of, so I actually bought one. Uh, so I'd have one for show and tell and just for one for my collection. Um, the, the Knowledge Bowl Light crew really spans all spectrum. We have um, like people like Daniel Shake, who is a uh, professional meteorite classifier. We have um, experienced collectors, um, experienced scientists. Uh, we have just hobbyist collectors, and we also have newbie collectors. So we really have a wide breadth of people uh, in the group with, with varied interests. We also entertain questions from serious viewers. And one question we do not entertain is, I have a rock. How can you look at it? <laughs> read, the, read the description because every video tells you how to submit pictures. Absolutely. So primitive is, is one of those words that's probably a little, little odd in that it, it may mean different things to different people. But I'm going to look at primitive from two different angles. One from uh, the, the material being as original as possible. Uh, for the planet building material. And then the other one is the material being as uh, unaltered from an elemental uh, standpoint and to have all of the cool ingredients for life sort of stuff. So, uh, but this meteorite is interesting and can be described as primitive because it has the same elemental abundance as the sun. So it's not depleted in the more um, volatile elements, uh, things like carbon. Uh, these meteorites uh, contain water. They contain uh, a number of hydrocarbons and they contain amino acids. Uh, and so this is really about the building blocks of life. So our petrological scale starts at 3.00, that's perfect. And then as you go higher in number to four to five to six to seven, you're getting more and more uh, accumulated time under heat and pressure and elevated temperatures as well. Of all the chondrules, you'll see that uh, altered to where by the time you get to a petrological grade seven, you can't see any chondrules at all. Mm -hmm. Rock doesn't really melt it's solid state recrystallization where the, the molecules move around and, and uh, join new crystals uh, as opposed to where they originally sat. So, All right, we are checking in with our, our meteorite dog in, uh, in Germany, but Marco is going to share two of his recent acquisitions from the Munich show that he just got back from. Hey guys, hello from Germany. I hope you're doing good and you have fun at the hangout. Yeah, I received some nice uh, new pieces. Yeah, here we have the first piece that I want to show. This stone is an unclassified NWA chondrite and uh, it weighs 124 grams. As you can see, it shows a very nice orientation and what I really like on that piece is that extremely round or almost globular form of that stone. What I really like is the globular form of wow. this piece. Yeah, that rotation is nice. Look at that thing. Yeah. Yeah, oriented. Wow. Very thick shield. That's a nice photo of it there. Yeah. Nice. And this Ooh. is the second piece um, that I want to show. The That's stone weighs 1.4 kilograms and is, of course, also a very nice oriented NWA chondrite. Oh, you can see it shows a very nice conical form. So it's a clearly a wow. nose cone. It shows elongated ragmaglyphs here on that side. And Look at that deepness. on the other side, you can see wonderful flow lines, radial flow lines. It's dripping. 
So here you can see the rack materials mm -hmm. pointing to the flight direction. And look here. Oh yeah. The frothy crust and the great contraction tracks. So yeah, they're achondrites, but they actually fall into a little group called primitive achondrites. So sliding over to the right and looking at the, uh, the up arrow there, that's where the lodronites are. And again, they're primitive achondrites and they fall into that Acapulcoite lodronite clan. Uh, so that's that white box sitting right above them. And we're specifically gonna talk about the lodronites tonight. So primitive achondrites are achondrites. So like Topher, um, like Topher and Pat were saying, you know, the chondrites go all the way up to seven. And then past seven, you start no longer being 100% the same material um, composition-wise because you started to melt to the point where differentiation occurs. So protoid chondrites are going through a small amount of differentiation. So these fall into that group of, of uh, a partial melt. And there's almost the same composition as a chondrite still, but a little bit of the material has started to settle out. Uh, you know, towards what would be the core of, of a differentiated uh, parent body. Um, that classification scheme was then uh, taken and modified a little more by uh, George Thurlin Pryor. Uh, and he was actually the one who added Lodron, I'm sorry, to the classification scheme. So Gustav Tischermack, first to observe it. Uh, George Pryor, first to throw it in a classification and, and coin the term Lodronites. So again, that, uh, that definition back from the MET poll doesn't tell you much about, about what, what's in it, besides the fact that it's related to an Acapulco 8. Uh, so here's the rough breakdown of, of what's in there. The majority of the minerals inside of that meteorite uh, uh, class are uh, low calcium pyroxene and olivine. Uh, so you go back to, uh, you know, Tishermack saying, oh, I'm going to compare it to an, an earth olivine, and that's, that's why right there. Um, down at the minor phase, right, so that's that's a lot less uh, of the constituent of the material. You got plagioclase and troilite in there, so that'll you'll see your uh, your iron sulfide in there, uh, and then accessories. So very small amounts. You'll get other types of sulfides, a little chromite, some phosphides, and some chromium diopside, uh, which I know you wanted to to take a peek at that, Topher. And here is a slice. The same. Oh no, this is a different slice. This is. Um... NWA 13507. Thanks for uh, for this video as well, um, Dr. Yang. Uh, you'll see that it is uh, translucent when sliced thinly, prepped correctly, and backlit. Just like erg check. So we hear pyroxene being in uh, in meteorites a lot. It's it's one of the main constituents in uh, lodronites, uh, and basically all it is is it's a magnesium and calcium rich uh, silicate mineral. Um, so this is, uh, this is NWA 5488. So let's see, these are, these are smaller. This is the first one. Hopefully you can see the, the green in the corner over oh, there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is NWA 11901. Uh, and we were talking about, you know, them containing uh, chrome diopside or chromium diopside uh, as, as one of the pyroxenes in there. Uh, so there you can see some of that green over there in the corner. And the beauty of it is actually on the back. Oh, my gosh. Wow. So, so yeah, the backside is pretty much just one big green nugget. <laughs> no, and uh, and in this one, uh, in the write-up from the Met Bowl, it actually mentions that there is a large amount of, of chromium diopside in, hmm. in this particular um, NWA number. NWA 11901. And this is my new 6.9 gram slice. So I'm actually going to take it out real quick. Yeah. Nice. Yep. And that's right where the chromium diopside is. Nice. So, yeah, I got super lucky on that one. Yeah. A um, little shout out to Ruben Garcia. I, uh, Mr. Meteorite, I appreciate the hookup on this one. Um, so this guy right here is a uh, 14 and a half gram of the uh, 13951 NWA uh lunar they call it the starry night lunar oh i was going to ask if that was the starry starry yeah. night it's got this beautiful blue and then if you turn it just the right way you can see just flecks of iron all through it that totally look like stars in the sky even the unpolished side 
So oh, um, yeah, uh, this guy right here. What the oh. heck? Oh wow! Oh, that's like an an illustration of the universe or something. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is NWA NWA thirteen nine eighty seven. It's a, a CK four carbonaceous, wow. and that is a gigantic calcium aluminum rich inclusion right there in the middle of it. Uh, two announcements of things to look forward to. Next week's show subject is Howardites. Yeah. And we should go for a three banger three weeks in a row. Howardites, Eucrites, Diagenites. We already did <laughs> Diagenites. Now we're going back to Howardites. We can't spell H E D in this place. We're, we're looking forward to another uh, fantastic time in Tucson. We're going to have the Meteorite Mansion 2022 going. Lots of uh, friends, lots of crew members, um, lots of meteorite shopping during the day, bringing the meteorites back to the meteorite mansion at night, hanging out, um, cutting them on the saw, lapping them, looking at them under a microscope, and just basically not sleeping. So that's the plan, and that's Tucson, and we cannot wait for it. All right, guys, we're checking in with Mike. Mike, how are you, buddy? Doing great. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Last week, we talked about the Diagenites, and I had mentioned that uh, Gustav Rose wanted to make uh, the Schalkites, and that would be Schalko being the first one of its type. And then uh, Gustav Tischermack came along, and we'll talk about him a little more later, uh, and said, no, th that's not right. We're going to call those the Diagenites. Uh, and he took uh, three very early ones, uh, including Schalka, and put them all together. So, but there she is. So that is Schalka. So that was like uh, 1857 or something like that. Wow. Um, so there's one diogenite that's older than this. Uh, it's 50 grams. It's from India. You are oh. not getting that one. No. So this, <laughs> this is the basically the oldest diogenite you can pick up. Very nice. Uh, you, can't, you can't be a type fall collector and pass up probably a once in a lifetime opportunity to score that one and that there is it uh, is the yeah. one and only right yeah. wow of mm. of the 300 known grams wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow of the 300 known grams that is all of two milligrams wow. no. Jesus. <laughs> and you could see you know you you had someone asking about you the price of rarity yeah, you pay for rarity, especially for that one. Holy macadamia mm. nuts. And that one and is several. <laughs> if you take the exact same material, like Pat said, wench comb, that's a CM2, I think. It's the exact same stuff as, exact same uh, as like Murchison, uh, same classification. But Murchison is six to $800 a gram. Wench comb is about six to eight thousand dollars a gram, so it's the exact same scientific stuff. So, from a point of view of, is a can a classification be a, the tipping point of the value? To a point, there's so many other factors that go into meteorite valuation. I actually made a presentation and a video on my YouTube channel called "The Five S's of Meteorite Valuation." Yeah. yeah, his his videos are extremely popular on my YouTube channel, and it's I, I'm absolutely thankful I get to use them. But it's it's just annoying as hell. <laughs> <laughs> How many hours I've sent uh, spent here editing stuff, and then number one and number two, <laughs> some beautiful camera work. Yes, a very beautiful camera. Look at that. Episode number three, dropping soon. Uh, um, a friend that was introduced to me by Maxime, uh, Maxime Denonson in Belgium. So this is Mikhail in France. Uh, I think he goes over the top in the most splendid way to create a museum experience in his collection. Please enjoy this. Hello, Tofer. Hi, everybody. Mikhail from France. I am glad to show you my little collection. Now you can see Pigskill, who broke the trunk of this Chevy. <laughs> I like this fragment for the large fusion crust. <laughs> and, and on the background, 
you can see a, a French comics a, about Silacoga story on the comics on the reality. Thank you. That is awesome. Like, did you see his peak skill? You my little yeah, creature. Little peak yeah. little here. No, you oh, can see. Just run on uh, Hot Wheels uh, Chevy Chevelles. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go find me one. <laughs> I just thought this was the this a, a gentleman who really enjoys collecting and, and putting on a display. He's got a, a display frame with the meteorite on loop, the smashed car, just uh, tremendous, tremendous uh, display. So, uh, this is my largest meteorite. Um, it was pronounced Bujia. So this is Bujia. It is from Northern Kenya. It is the largest chondrite ever fallen in uh, or found in Kenya. This whole side is fusion crusted and regmaglyph. Wow. I was super happy when I cleaned it and saw all this fusion crust and it goes all the way down here on this side, all the way around to this side down here. And then deep regmaglyphs in here. Yeah. And when you look at it, you can actually see flow lines in the fusion crust. Yeah, the stippling. Hey, thanks a lot, everyone. Great week. Remember, Howardites next week. See ya. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye, guys. Good night.